what brought me to this field, I never expected to become a certified divorce financial analyst as a little girl. I mean, who who runs around <laughs> saying that? Um, but I realized how important being financially knowledgeable was when I watched my grandmother, who unfortunately was in an abusive marriage. And she shared with me before she passed away that she felt financially trapped. And that was one of the reasons, there were many reasons that she felt trapped, but finances were a big part of it. And Sherry, it was a wake-up call to me um, as a, you know, a, a young 20-year-old that uh, as a woman, um, this is not a nice to know. This is a must know. And I ended up creating that beautiful charity that you talked about, Savvy Ladies. In her honor, she ended up passing away from the abuse. And we now have worked with 20,000 women, all pro bono uh, in through our helpline where you get to work one-on-one with a certified financial advisor or a CFP. Um, again, it's all pro bono. And so, you know, I'll share more resources, but what my hope is for everyone listening today is to know that wherever you are, that's a good place and, and let's move forward together. You know, you can always learn more and the more financial information you have, the greater your confidence and the better decisions you're going to make at this unbelievable, important and pivotal, you know, pivot, pivotal time in your life. And that is, you know, thinking about going through or after a divorce. Yeah, I think that's so beautiful. And as you were saying that, I was thinking of how many people will benefit from the nonprofit. So uh, anyone who's listening, I'm going to include in the show notes all the uh, links to everything we discussed today. Uh, Stacy has many resources, and I'm going to be sharing all of those in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. So um, Stacy, I love that story. And what comes to mind is I was uh, last night, actually, I was watching a documentary. It's, it was on some, I love documentaries. That's kind of my thing. And it was on somebody very well known. I'm not going to say who it was. And it, the, this, this person lived the, pro, the, the time in his life where he was most well known, uh, for what he did was in the, anywhere from the thirties to the fifties. Mm-hmm. And I was researching him in more detail, and turns out he, although he did this great thing, he was a philanderer and cheated on his wife the entire time, and she stayed by his side through all of that. And I, I was thinking about how limited her resources probably were at that time mm-hmm. in her life. She probably didn't have a way to provide for herself or a way or anywhere to live for that matter. So I would imagine that's kind of similar to what your grandmother went through. You know, you know, Sherry, very much so. And a, a lot of people say, well, that was that generation. But I have to tell you, Sherry, um, it's not just that generation. Um, even now, um, we as women, when we get partnered up and uh, married, typically we do a divide and conquer with tasks, especially when we have children and more times uh, than not our husband ends up taking over the financial piece, which, you know, hey, okay, if they enjoy it, fine, I'm going to be doing X, Y, and Z. And so it it seems very harmless, but it can really hurt you. And so, um, you know, making sure that you're part of the finances, and in particular, if you're thinking about a divorce, that you get involved with the finances. You attend those meetings if you do have a financial advisor. If you don't open the account statements, whether they're brokerage accounts or credit cards or checking accounts, um, the more you know, the better decisions you're going to make. And also, also studies have shown that your legal bills will be less. They will be less. So if I mean, I don't know what oh, else, really? you know. Yeah. What other, what other motivator could there be? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to most likely have a better settlement and you're going to pay less in legal fees. And, yeah. you know, I, I, you really don't, I mean, maybe a, a box of Godiva chocolates too, but, um, <laughs> you know, you, you're, you're doing really well there. Um, well, and, and I can think of so many clients who just didn't have an interest in finances and their husband was good at yeah. it. So they just kind of let them do it. So, and then they end up later being kind of locked out of that whole process, you know? Yeah. And locked out of that process, um, sometimes it's, you know, just because of the divide and conquer, but sometimes we also see financial abuse where they've been locked out of that process. This was my grandmother. Um, 
and on purpose not folded into the understanding and knowledge about the finances, even in some ways um, stymied from creating their own career and having their own earning capacity. Um, you know, it, it th- there are all different levels, of course, but um, the biggest piece for, for all of these people, knowledge is power. And it really is important, especially as you're thinking about the divorce process. And, you know, what I say to women, um, even if you have a happily ever after marriage, which, you know, I'm, uh, I'm celebrating my 20th anniversary. So I hope I have one Congra- of those. Um, Congratulations. Um, but, you know, 80, 80% of women, eight out of 10 women, um, we at one point in our life are going to be on our own, having to make our own financial decisions. And, you know, if, you know, your, your chances of 80%, um, those are pretty good odds that, you are going to be on your own at some point, whether you outlive your spouse, whether you get a divorce, or whether you just, you know, don't necessarily have a partner in your life. And so, you know, this I put right up there with financial health and, and phys- you know, physical health too. Um, if someone said, you know, there's an 80% chance that if you don't don't go to the gym, you're going to have a heart attack. Well, Sherry, you and I would be at that gym every single yeah. day, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, yeah. Well, here we are, 80% chance that you're going to be doing this all on your own at some point in your life. So uh, really important. And, and just again, a kudos to everybody who's listening today that to, that's really encouraging themselves, um, you know, and, and taking an interest and in, in taking, you know, agency over, over their financial life. Well, and I think, you know, I'm not, as you mentioned, you kind of hinted at earlier, I'm a big believer that divorce can be a catalyst for positive change. And um, part of that be, uh, becoming kind of uh, reclaiming your identity, so to speak, is is getting your arms around your, your money, your finances. And if you can, even if that's not been a strength for you, if that's, if divorce kind of helps you step into that, then that's a good thing. It's a very yeah. good thing because then you're going to feel like it's going to it's going to give you more confidence. You're going to be more empowered. You're going to have better self esteem. I mean, there's so many things that come from that. There, there are so many, and um, the the book that you talked about before that I, we had written, unveiling the unspoken truth, the financial challenges that women face uh, before, during, and after divorce, was based on us interviewing 150 women who went through divorce, and I have to tell you that. Almost no one regretted their divorce. Wow. And almost and almost every woman shared that she felt like she was in a much better space. Maybe not financially. Maybe not financially. She felt, you know, a lot of the women shared and and I'd love to talk about today of some of the mistakes they felt like they made. Uh Um, some of the, you know, pitfalls that they you know, live through and want to really share that information to other women so that they don't do the same thing. So Mm -hmm. a lot of women, you know, did feel more financial stress, um, things being tighter, but were more knowledgeable about their finances than they ever have been. And Mm -hmm. we see time and time again, those women who really embrace learning about their finances are the ones who have that happily ever after, and actually are able to create that financial security, not only in the short term, but more important for us ladies, the long term, how to, you know, age 95 and and beyond. Mm 